So I can't think of a worse game to start your defensive coordinator resume <laughs> in point. maybe league history than against this guy. But oh, it's going to be tough. Hey, Mike McDaniel revenge game, perhaps. Former uh, Washington assistant coming back, coming to FedEx. Back at it again. The boys are absolutely dialed in this week, bringing you all the bonus content. Who says you take time off for the holidays, huh? Not us. Not us bringing you all the good stuff. So we figure mini buy for the commanders this week after that Thursday night game. We did this after the first mini buy in Chicago. We figure we do it again here. Bring you guys, talk a little state of the commanders. Because I've been, we've been uh, been active on Twitter this weekend as always, and kind of seeing just what's going down. Everybody's taking the opportunity with this Sunday off to kind of take a step back, um, and then we're gonna hit the Dolphins preview on the back half of the episode as well. Um, and then you guys will get a Bada Bets exclusive episode coming to you this Thursday, recapping this weekend's games and also looking forward to the next week. So. A lot of stuff to get into today, Pop. How are you? Uh, I know we don't have vibe check on the outline, but give me a give me a 10-second vibe check here. Just real quick. Tell the people how you're feeling on the field, off the field. Where are you at right now? Vibes are good on a football Sunday because we didn't play today. Yeah. So tranquilo. Always helps. Tranquilo. Always helps. Did you uh, watch it, any, of these, um, any of the 1 o'clock games or you just been kicking it? Ah, uh, the, the the two one o'clock games that they are showing here are pretty awful. They have the Giants, Pats, and then Steelers, uh, Bengals. So there either one of them were were very inspiring. But. Hey, hey, I you shouldn't be saying that. Our boy Tommy DeVito, winning record as a starting NFL That's quarterback. It. Boy might have something. Boy might have something. <laughs> I don't know. He he didn't look. Uh, he didn't look very impressive today, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just I think Josh Harris said it all in the statement, which was good to see, and that it's just not good enough and very disappointing, right? And uh, that's that's you know that's where we are, but all we can do is look forward to that next game, which we'll do here in a little bit, and you know we're gluttons for punishment, regardless of where things are. I'd still look forward to see how we can compete against the Dolphins coming up and uh, kind of miss having a game today, believe it or not. Um, but, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting against Miami, but I think right now we'll talk a little, little state of the commanders. So, Pop, first things first, and really, I mean, kind of the only topic that's mattered all season, but – we continue to revisit it. We continue to spend time on it. Sam Howell, let's get into a little bit of an evaluation. Now, you told me I would be crazy to place the boy Sam at 3,500 yards going into the year. Well, barring injury, that's a lot. Did I say that? Point. You did. You did. You can check the text. Yeah, check the, check the text. You can check the, uh, check the podcast at some point. Um, but you're looking at almost 3,400 yards, 3,339 yards, first in the NFL right now, passing yards, averaging 278.3 a game, which is just crazy. 16 tuds, 13 interceptions. So he is first in the NFL in uh, interceptions, 18 tuds, excuse me. Um, 49.1 quarterback rating, 55 sacks. So leading the NFL in sacks, 22nd in the league in quarterback rating. Um, and you got 87.3 in uh, passer rating, so 20th in the NFL there. So kind of a mixed bag. You see some really high numbers. You see some really low numbers. How are you feeling overall? How – give him a letter grade maybe on uh, his performance so far this year? Yeah, I guess before I throw up a grade, you know, maybe just talk to it a little bit. I think 
you said it well. You set it up perfectly, and, and I don't remember saying that, but I trust you that I did say it. I think if we got to grade this in the context of what our expectations are, um, I mean, you can grade it however you want. But for me, I'm going to grade it in the context of what my expectations were at the beginning of the year. And given this, that he's a first-year starter, and this is his first time really doing this, I don't know how you'd look at this season so far and be anything but thrilled with what Sam has done and accomplished. I think that even this quote unquote bad games, like, you know, people might quantify the game against the giants and and maybe this game against Dallas. So I think it was a pretty solid performance bar one pick six. There's a lot of good stuff in there. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. And I think the fact that he's continued to improve, continued to learn, you know, if you, if you take and extrapolate his sack rate from the last few games, I don't know the exact number as compared to what was going on in the beginning of the year, a lot of that ties to some of the adjustments they made in the O-line. It's not just on Sam. You also think about the lack of help, right, playing behind that defensive line the high degree of difficulty that EB's put him in in terms of, you know, being the highest passing team in the league for a young QB, very high degree of difficulty there. Um, so the same people that say, well, his yardage is, is skewed because they pass so much. Well, his interceptions are skewed because they pass so much as well. You know, the, 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 the coordinator has – his sacks are skewed – because they pass so much. The coordinator hasn't necessarily reflected him, protected him in that sense. He's thrown him into deep end. Some might say that's been really good for his development. Um, it has probably been good for his development. It shows you how incredibly resilient he's been. So I, I, I don't know how you can even objectively look at this and try to objectively look at it. And, you know, listening to a lot of people talk over the course of the last couple of days from Chris Cooley to Kevin Sheehan to Jay Gruden to JP Finley to others. Right. I mean, there's not pretty much across the board. People are very happy with Sam Howe and really think he could be the guy going into next year. And um, I believe that I'd have absolutely no issue with him being the guy for next year for us at all based on what I've seen. And in fact, I'd be excited about that. And there's, I'll admit it, but there's part of me that's rooting that we don't have too high a pick so that we're not tempted to go after one of these guys, although there'll be worse problems to have. But, you know, I, I'll let you comment and then maybe we go letter grade. Yeah, I'm, you know, I think I'm a little lower on Howell than you, but not by much. I still am firmly in that he's the guy right now camp um it was the i started the year of you got to prove to me that he's the guy but i think he could be if you're just looking at raw talent and then now i've kind of moved into the like he's the guy until proven otherwise camp i don't love what i've seen in the last couple of weeks in terms of the regression but i don't even know that it's regression as much as just like this team stinks and we're starting to see guys are i don't want to say guys are quitting I don't know you're not going to agree with that, but I, I think this team is losing a little bit of that fire and a little bit of that fight that it's had uh, previously. And I, I think agree with that. you're just going to kind of see across the board. It's just you, we more and more, we're just asking Sam to stand on his head every week. And I think if you look at the couple of wins we have put on the board, it's been, it's been a result of Sam standing on his head in those weeks. And if you look at the losses where we've even looked remotely like a competent football team, it has been a result of Sam standing on his head. Um, You look back to the Denver game. I mean, Sam had to put together a absolutely blacked out performance in week two in order for us to win that football game against one of the worst teams in the league at the time. Um, You look back to both Philly losses. Sam really showed up, played well. You'd like to see more from him in both of the New York games. The Buffalo game is obviously a tough one, but you are more willing to take those lumps in what is essentially a rookie year than you generally would be. And I mean, look, let's just call it what it is. Quarterback play across the NFL is down. 
look across the league. Look at guys like Hertz, who are still top five, top eight guys individually. And, you know, he's not performing the way he was performing last year. Look at guys like Josh Allen, where you're going, what the hell is going on with this guy? Look at guys like Justin Herbert. You know, he's flinging the ball across the yard, but it's not turning into wins at the end of the day. So I think we're seeing across the league a little bit more of a shift in the way we're viewing the quarterback position. And these guys are a little bit more dependent on the play calling and what they have in terms of the positions around them and the help that they're getting from their defense and stuff like that. Um, And I think that you're looking at Sam, who's a guy that couldn't be in a worse situation in terms of development, I think, and is overcoming it week in and week out. And I think that's a great, that's a great sign for the kid. Um, And so for me, I think he's definitely the guy going forward and I'm willing to approach this draft barring we end up with like the number one overall pick, which I think mathematically at this point is going to be tough. Um, I'm willing to approach this draft with the quarterback position firmed up. Maybe you take a guy in the third or fourth round to compete with them or as a backup role, but definitely not in the first round. I'm not looking quarterback. Yeah, no, I think it's all very well said. I mean, I I think we just got to look at every, everything has to be looked at within context. I think that resiliency he's shown given an extremely difficult situation, like you said, just surrounding this team is, you know, and the character of the player and the fact that he's so even killed and he is learning. And I don't think this is, this is year one. I mean, he's playing as a mid tier at times with elite flashes now quarterback in this league and it's only year one so you got to operate under the assumption he's going to improve and that maybe he's going to get a bit more help hopefully from his teammates and his coaches we'll just put it at that so grade wise i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go b plus i am tempted to give an a minus or an a i don't see how i you could get below that b plus in my humble opinion I think he's exceeded any expectations I had for the preseason. And, you know, when I look at floor and ceiling, you know, he's broken through my ceiling personally in terms of what I thought was feasible for him. I just wanted him to kind of look decent, not implode, and, you know, show continue to grow and improve. And he, he's hit the ground running from the very first game. And, um, you know, what that's going to turn into, who knows, you know, ultimately, we've got to turn the keys over to whoever's running this team next year. If they see a QB they really love in the top five, I'm not going to hate on that. That that could be a topic for another day. But, um, yeah, I, I think I've said it already. I'd just be repeating myself. Yeah. I, B plus. Uh, so just to, just to clarify, are you grading that B plus against the field or are you grading that B plus against – what you expected from how this season or what you want, like how, where just give, give the people just two seconds of insight as to where that B plus is graded against. I'm just giving it a, as a pure grade. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous to compare him good. to a Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm grading him as a first year quarterback. All right. Fair. That's yeah. how I'm grading him. Cause that's what I he like is. That. I like yeah. that. I'm going my, – my grade's a little different. I know you said it's ridiculous to compare him to a Pat Mahomes who – by the way, Pat Mahomes ain't been Pat Mahomes this year, but that's for another discussion. Of course, the year that the the Tenali boys invest in him in fantasy. But uh, I'm going against the fields for Howell, and I think it's exactly in line with what I said. I'm still in on Howell. I'm just a little bit lower than you. I'm going B- minus on Howell across the field, and the only – the only uh, – the only thing that I want to see a little bit differently is I just want to see those certain disappearances for quarters at a time. I want to see those start to even out. I would rather see 75 yards every quarter than 150 yards in the fourth and 100 in the first and then nothing in the middle two. But is it Sam That's, disappearing? I don't see it being Sam It's not all on Sam. He, he, it's, it's, not not him that, Sam. it's not on him that we can't pick up one yard. Well, I mean, it's not – yeah, it's it's more complicated. Yeah. I think that's a harsh grade, but I I'll, I'll let you run with it. That's that's my grade. So I'm, I'm going B I'm going B minus against the field and I'm going that saying that 
we haven't had better than B plus quarterback play in this town for years. And we've been saying if we could just get a B minus quarterback, we'd compete. So it's not Sam that's letting this team down. It's the rest of the team that's letting Sam down. I still firmly believe that. And I think B minus given what he's got to work with on this team is, is incredible. I think that's a very, a very solid grade. So let's, uh, you know, just real quick, let's touch on a few things. Just what do you want to see pop with these last five games remaining? We've talked about this needs to be a really, um, this is a crucial time to evaluate what's going on with this team and who our core is going forward. What do you want to see? I think, you know, for me, you know, what I'd like to see, and I actually wrote, wrote down three things here that I'd like to see, but you know, obviously you want to see Sam continue to improve and that that's, that's plus, um, EB, right? But you want to see Sam continue to develop, continue to improve, put up some good games. Um, he needs some more help. I'm going to say that right away. He needs some more help from his teammates. We got to cut out the drops. We need our receivers to play better than they've been playing. Um, you want to see improvement from the defense. So the big shake up in coaching, as, you know, and Ron taking over, which I don't even think we've touched on too much so far. I know we already had a previous pod on that, but you know, um, let's see Payne and Allen be Payne and Allen. Let's see Cam Curl be Cam Curl. Let's see Jamin Davis improve, and let's see Forbes and maybe a KJ Henry improve and flash. You gotta just put Forbes out there at this point, and let's see what we got in the kid. At this point, there's no protecting him. Let's see that improvement, and then I just want to be competitive in these games down the stretch. Maybe pull off an upset. Here or there. I'm not looking to, you know, run the table or anything, but I do want this team to be competitive. No more embarrassing games down the yeah. stretch. There's a lot, lot to ask for given the competition, but that's what I'd like to see. I like that, Pop. I, I'm I'm in the same boat. I'm looking for, I mean, I've been a guy all year that's been yelling about I'm so sick of individual performances and I want the team to work as a unit. Um, but I'm looking for individual flash plays and splash plays for the rest of this year, because right now I'm just more concerned about evaluating who's going to be hanging out on the roster than I am evaluating Ron as a defensive coordinator or EB as an offensive coordinator. Cause at this point I feel like we have a pretty decent body of work from the crew. And I want to see Jahan Dotson. Can he start to put some decent games together or do we need more help with wide receiver? Uh, I want to see Deron Payne, can he start finishing plays again and start making some splash plays? John Allen, where is he? What's been going on with him? Because we saw at the beginning of the year, the defense was terrible as a unit, but we would still see four or five sacks. We would still see these splash plays. And I know Sweat and Young are gone, but I want to see that. I want to see some passes defended from Cam Curl, some batted balls, even a diving potential interception that goes off his fingertips or something. Where has he been these last few weeks? Maybe another punch out from Jamin Davis. I want to start to see these splash plays from individual players again, because all of a sudden we kind of got away from that aside from Brian Robinson and Sam Howell really. And we're just seeing, and David Mayo last week for whatever reason at the beginning of the game, and we're just seeing individual, we're just seeing the team as a unit look subpar. So I want to start to see individuals, do their thing. Um, That's mostly what I'm looking for because I think coaching wise is going to be a complete refresh. Um, But yeah, the the team has to react in a way as individuals, right? As a team. Yeah. Okay. It's five games up left. They got an uphill climb, you know, although you win a couple in a row, who knows? I mean, you, you know, I don't expect us to beat the dolphins. We'll get into our prediction in the next pod. Right. But we win against the Dolphins, and then we got a bye, and then we pick up a win against LA. All of a sudden, there's going to be a little bit of buzz happening about what can we do, what can we pull off. It's in their hands individually. They got to go out there and show some pride. You know, I thought if they read Josh's, you know, statement, the, the ownership is watching. And do you want to be part of this team next year or not? And you got to play with that type of passion. I agree with you. I wouldn't use the word quit, but there's a level of um, a lack of fire. There's a lack of fire, even from some of our best players. I won't name names, 
that is disappointing and, and they need to really pick themselves up. And, you know, there's a pretty significant change made with coaching. It'd be interesting to see just as a side nugget, what Ron can do. Do we, is there a noticeable difference in our defense plays? I don't know. I have no clue, but that's going to be interesting, but yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's got to be better. See. So that's, uh, it sounds like both of us are kind of looking at this from the same perspective as we want to see individuals who's in it and who's, who's not. That's really the, at the end of the day is those individual evaluations. So we can see what this team needs going forward. You got to imagine. If we get the, totally uh, embarrassed by the dolphins, right? I mean, that's, I know they're a really good team. I know they can put a bunch of happen. points in. <laughs> yeah. But that that's that's a bad look if that happens. Of course. Right. Of course. Yeah. And I'm not even concerned about, you know, if we lose by 30 to the Dolphins, can Deron Payne get two or three sacks? You know, can we see maybe uh, Cam Curl get an interception? Can we see Kendall Fuller get an interception? Two has thrown a handful of picks this year. But with that being said, Pop, you want to jump into this Dolphins preview? Yeah, just just one last comment. You know, ultimately to me, what's been most disappointing is I felt like I feel like we've played below our talent level. I so agree. Play up to your talent level, or maybe even a little bit above. Be competitive, and then I won't have anything to complain about. I agree. You lose the Dolphins by seven or ten, and you fight in that game. Okay, I'm good with it. You know, maybe first three quarters of the Dallas game kind of thing, right? But yeah. if you just get blown out of the building and, and don't show the effort and don't show the fight, then I got a problem with that. And, yeah, and that's you know, what we, we need to see. We saw, it, uh, we saw it change, especially defensively. I mean, guys were flying around to the ball at the beginning of the year, and we just don't see that anymore. And we know the defensive scheme was sucks and anime coach change, whatever. But we saw that change over the course of the year. That fire kind of evaporated and started to burn out and I think is almost extinguished. So how can we get it back against the Dolphins this week, Pop? Let's get into it. Um, scouting report, I'm going to keep it brief. They've got everybody. This is the most explosive and dangerous offense in the NFL by far. Um, them setting NFL records are coming close. Uh, should tell you everything you need to know about that. Um, defensively, they've got Jalen Ramsey. They've got Bradley Chubb. Um, just a solid defensive unit as well. Not a unit to be slept on. This is like a middle of the road defense with a historic offense. And there's not much more to say other than what are we going to do about Tyree Hill and Jalen Waddle in terms of scouting report wise. I mean, that's as bad of a matchup as you could possibly have. I think it's pretty brutal there. And it just, I mean, if we saw what DJ Moore was doing to Kendall Fuller and Benjamin St. Juice and Emmanuel Forbes, what is Tyree Hill going to do to us? I mean, that's, that is, that's terrifying. So that's, that's pretty much it on the scouting report. Um, yeah. Elite offense, middle of the road defense, and we've got historically bad defense and middle of the road offense. So we'll see how that matchup works out for us. It, it feels a lot like the Dallas game to me in terms of the matchup is just really bad. Um, but you want to get into the keys pop? Yeah, and I guess I guess they just report. lost Jalen Phillips, which is a that is a pretty, big loss for them. Pretty big loss for them. So I think the only thing we can do is is sort of strength to weakness is 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 really try to take advantage of that defense. I think when you consider that we went up against one of the best defenses in the NFL, and actually it didn't account too bad for ourselves if we could just if we could just make one yard, right? Um, you know, in terms of yardage, in terms of time of possession, in terms of all the other stats other than scoreboard, the offense performed pretty decently against the Cowboys. So now you're going to have, you know, a much lesser test against the Dolphins. And, and, and so I believe our strength has been offensively. We've got to take advantage of their, you know, like you said, middle of the road at best defense. And it's got to be – a huge performance, you know, A plus performance by Sam and the boys um, in order to have a shot. Yeah. It's, uh, we're, yeah, we're going to need to just, it's like I said last week against, uh, against Dallas. I think the only chance we have is if we just blow the top off of this thing. We're going to need to score 30 and change, um, 
maybe closer to 40 even to be it's honest like a, with you so go ahead well, we're gonna get into it we'll give away our keys but I, i'll have a few more comments as we get get through our keys here yeah so our our keys are gonna be pretty uh pretty simple here pretty easy to understand i think uh number one you want to fast start by the offense and you want to finish drives in especially in short yardage we saw that being a real struggle Staying ahead of the downs last week was not the problem. It was converting on third and one, third and two, fourth and one, fourth and two, which is uh, kind of silly. And I'll add to that, you're going to need some big plays. You're going to need some big plays offensively um, in order to keep this thing afloat. Number two, it's got to be minimize big plays on defense. I mean, whatever, whatever safety help you need to give over the top of Tyreek Hill, however off the ball you need to play him, I'd rather he just cut us up for 15 catches for 175 yards underneath than blow the top off of us. Um, Lord knows he can do both. And I mean, Lord knows there's nobody better in the NFL at catching a three yard ball and turning it into a 75 yard pass than Tyreek Hill. And Jalen Waddle is the second best. He's on the other side. So that'll be fun. Uh, but we got to minimize big plays. Hopefully at least contain the rush. They, they've been known to blow the top off of the defense running this year, too. Let's at least minimize the big plays from the run. Um, number three, Pop, he wrote this one down and I, I think was was perfectly put. You're going to need some big plays. You're going to need some big breaks, some big plays, some takeaways. This is going to be one of those where, you know, maybe, Ty, maybe Tyreek Hill slips on a go route and the ball gets deflected and, it lands in Kalik Hudson's hands and he takes it back for six. Like we're going to need some fluky stuff in order to be in this one, some big plays some takeaways, some pick sixes. We saw New York do it. Um, New York, strangely enough, even with Tyrod Taylor, at quarterback battled against, uh, against Miami. So I would almost copy that game plan in terms of defense. Um, and yeah, we're going to have to turn Tua over, which is something that we've been terrible at this year and something that Tua's done a bit. So who knows? Maybe Ron taking over this defense can see something and make some key plays and adjustments, and maybe he's auditioning for a defensive coordinator position somewhere else <laughs> and wants to, wants to show I something. So doubt that. He's, he's auditioning knows? for a job on NFL Network, I believe. Or but, uh, uh, membership over at Palm Springs. But, yeah, it's uh, – it's tough. It's going to be a tough one this week. Pop, go ahead and give your comments on the uh, on the keys here. Um, yeah, I mean, brilliant keys, of course. Um, <laughs> I don't know who came yeah. up with those. Uh, <laughs> Pop, Pop held the guy on the keys this week. Uh, no, I think I think the formula for being competitive in this game and maybe even pulling out a, a W is the Eagles formula, right? We did it twice against the Eagles. We got to start fast. We got to try to get in the front foot here and get a lead. We know stopping their offense is not something we're going to be able to consistently do all game long. They're going to put up points. We've got to match them and put up points and gain some momentum out of this. It's likely to be a shootout, but I think if things break right and our offense performs like they can, you know, um, we can we can get in a shootout against them. And, yeah, the rest of it is we have to just play discipline in the sense of trying to minimize big plays. You know, can you eliminate big plays? We use the word minimize on purpose. Probably can't eliminate them. But, you know, there's going to be a couple. We'll just make sure the dam doesn't break open. And we're going to need to kind of, you know, two has been known to turn the ball over. Let's take advantage of that, you know, and see if we can't get, 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 turn them over. And then on our side, we've got to play disciplined as best we can, right? We can't, we can't, you know, give them the ball. If we give them the ball, which we did a pretty decent job of against Dallas, bar the one pick. Yeah, you know, and, and the other thing, just it's so simple. But can we gain one yard? Are we capable of getting one yard? You know, when we get ahead on the change, we're in second and two. With this offense, you have no confidence they can convert those two yards because we don't have a running package that can do it. And I don't know, maybe it's too late, but dropping Sam back five, six, seven steps on a, when we need one yard is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I, we just, we've got to be able to convert on those situations or we've got no shot. 
If we were able to convert short yardage against the Cowboys, that game does not, as, as, as Ron said, snowball the way it does. We stay competitive. We put up a few more points. I don't think we win, but we're, there's a much different vibe. Of course, I'm kind of glad maybe what happened happened and Jack's no longer head coach. But, yeah, I think that's the key. Or, I mean, uh, sorry, I'm God forbid, defensive coordinator. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it it's really going to be intriguing with Ron. You know, you know, my expectation is we won't see too much change. But, you know, he talked about simplifying things, which I think this team is in desperate need of. And maybe taking a common sense approach to running that that team that defensive team is exactly yeah. what we need. You know? Yeah. So And that's I mean that's what we've been begging for all year is just like, hey, right. if AJ Brown has eight catches and seventy five yards in the first half, maybe we just revolve the entire rest of I mean, you see it all across the NFL. The Patriots do a really good job of this. They just say you can beat us elsewhere, but you're not going to beat us with that guy. We're just going to take him out. Maybe right. we could just do that and just think a little bit. I mean, I do it in Madden. I'm sure you can find a way to do it in in real life. Yep. Um, it's not it's yep. not that challenging. So that being said, he's got his work cut out for us. I can't think of a worse game to start your defensive coordinator resume <laughs> in point. maybe league history than against this guy. But, oh. It's going to be tough. Hey, Mike McDaniel revenge game, perhaps. Former uh, Washington assistant coming back, coming to FedEx. Um, I think we're so yeah. far in his rearview mirror. I can I highly doubt it. it's any kind of uh, I wish he, I motivation he for him. I hope he still thinks about us. That's about the best we <laughs> can do at this point. Um, but let's uh, let's wrap this thing up, Pop. I think we're gonna do predictions um, in the bottom bets because there's no lines for it right, right now. I'll tell you right. what. Spoiler alert: I'm taking Miami. I think it's gonna be like a college. I mean, you gotta pop. Do you want to give? Let's do a like a, a Benji bet almost like from the Beltway football. Take a guess on what you think the line is gonna be. Oh man. Um... I I think it's probably going to be something like you know we're at home. I think it'll be be like a ten and a half something. I'm like going. That. So you're going minus ten and a half. Yeah. Miami. I'm going to go minus thirteen and a half. Miami. That's about right. the highest line I've seen this year. I'm going to take that. I think we're going to be looking at almost a college football line this week. But uh, who knows? Guys, strap in. It's going to be an interesting week. Thank you all for tuning in and checking out this little mini buy podcast a little looser a little chiller format this week just kind of chopping it up um and yeah we'll see how it goes in miami and we'll see you guys for the bottom bets on thursday without further ado i've been dom this is pop thanks for another great week